Come on. Time for an ultrasound. Isla the Tamandua, a lesser anteater, doing her follow-up. Yeah, so already we can see, we start to see the spine right in through here. And the ribs, you can see those lines. We've got skull right there, that round circle right there. We believe that she is on day 117 of a 130 to 160-ish day gestation period, so it could be any day that we will soon be expecting a little tamandua. I wonder if baby is moving a lot. <laughs> this is the most wiggly she's been for her for ultrasound. Single ultrasound. <laughs> so we have a heartbeat right there. You can see the um, oh. flickering. There. Yeah. So baby is really squirmy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure she can feel that. It's moving around a lot. It doesn't have a lot of space left. <laughs> so. Big baby. And Isla's always been one to have a very flat tummy. She's starting to get a little tiny pooch. <laughs> Got a round belly. And she will be a first time mom. So we are uh, very hopeful that she will take to the baby and know exactly what to do. The instincts will kick in. And Colleen here is one of her primary trainers. I'm also one of um, Isla's trainers, so she's very comfortable being in close proximity with us um, because she's an ambassador animal. So she was raised by keepers at a very young age. Otherwise, you wouldn't see a normal tamandua sitting like this. No, you absolutely would not. <laughs> <laughs> we've put a lot of time into building a relationship with Isla, and we've done a lot of training with her to be able to get her to this point. So she's used to being picked up and held and moved around and it proved to be really beneficial in a situation like this because ultrasounds have ended up being really easy and we've been able to do them very frequently, um, whereas in a lot of animals you kind of can only do it every so often um, and it requires a lot of specific training where Isla kind of just sits on my lap and lets us do our thing as long as she's got some food she enjoys. <laughs> And it's also really important, too, because not a lot of uh, Tamandua breeding information is out there. So we are going to be providing um, to a lot of other zoos that we network with, mm -hmm. that we communicate with. Um, and you can see those claws there. So that relationship and her comfortability is very important because those claws could be very dangerous if she wanted to use them. Um, in fact, that's what they do use for self-defense in the wild um, against any type of a predator, like maybe an ocelot. Um, they do not have any teeth. That's why she's using her tongue and lapping up all that food. This pregnancy in particular is important to the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, we've been trying for two and a half years. We are making lots of preparations to get ready for baby, putting in cameras and um, lowering the nest box to make it not too far from the ground and um, those kinds of things. So we are getting ready. So we'll obviously give mom and baby a little bit of privacy to be able to bond with each other and then um, we'll have some blinds probably that are blocking you know, guest view for a little while, but as soon as possible, we will open up those blinds and guests will have a chance to see mommy interacting with um, and bonding with baby. And baby will spend most of its time riding around on mom's back or staying in the nest box. So when mom comes out, baby might very well be attached to her back riding around on her. That's how they would do it in the wild and they will stay together for up to a year, so.